We're going to take a little bit of time right now to talk about the properties of different types of galaxies and how astronomers can and how astronomers can classify their shapes. The image that I'm showing you on the screen is of the Andromeda galaxy, the nearest big galaxy to the Milky Way. It's a spiral galaxy and what we see here is g uh, uh, gas and dust and the spiral arms of the Andromeda galaxy and we also see its rich color, a lot of blue within the disk. The Milky Way is a spiral galaxy. The image at the top of the screen that uh, I have here shows our view from inside of the galaxy. The Sun is in the disk of the galaxy and so when we look through it we see uh, gas and dust, that's the dark material that we see uh, within the disk, and then we also see uh, the light from stars within the disk of the galaxy. And the image on the bottom right is what our galaxy would look like if we could see it top down. So spiral galaxies make up about 60% of the galaxies in our local universe, the ones that are easily seen through a telescope. And spiral galaxies are generally made up of a disk of stars, gas, and dust, a bulge near the center, and spiral arms. There's a few different types of shapes of spiral galaxies. And so I've got a few here, seen top down and edge on. A spiral galaxy, uh, like the one in the top left, here we have some very nice spiral arms, gas and dust. On the bottom we see a spiral galaxy with two big arms, a bulge, and a bar through the center. And so there's something also called uh, spiral, uh, uh, barred spiral galaxies. On the bottom right is a barred spiral galaxy, but also with a ring around the bar. And then, and then in the top right is a spiral galaxy seen edge on. Let's take a look at this image of a spiral galaxy. This is NGC 1376 and this image was produced by collecting light with the Hubble Space Telescope. Let me ask you this question. What do you notice about the colors of the stars in the spiral arms of this galaxy? If you thought that what you mainly see is blue color, then you'd be right. And blue stars are mainly O and B type stars. What this means is that the arms of spiral galaxies contain most of the O and the B type stars because it's not just this galaxy we notice this uh, with. We notice this with most big spiral galaxies. So here's another question. Which stars live longer, red stars or blue stars? If we're talking about blue stars, we're probably talking about the O and the B main sequence stars. And with red stars, I'm not really talking about the red giants. I mean red main sequence stars. And so the ones that live the longest are the ones that are the lowest in mass. And as we've discussed before, for main sequence stars, the lowest mass ones are the ones with the lowest luminosity and the lowest temperatures, or the redder main sequence stars. So the red stars live the longest, which means blue stars live a shorter amount of time. So what we can conclude from this is that stars in the spiral arms of galaxies are mostly hot, bright, and young stars. There's stars in between the spiral arms, but they're not primarily the O and the B type stars. And since O type stars have such short lifetimes, what this means is that the spiral arms is where stars form. Because o and the, the O and B type stars, because they don't live very long, if they're in the spiral arms, they haven't been there for very long, and they haven't had enough time since forming to drift out of the spiral arms. So if stars form in the spiral arms, how do they spread out over the entire disk of a spiral galaxy? We have to remember that spiral arms are not permanent structures. Rather, they're just locations where stars form. And stars can drift from a spiral arm into another part of the galaxy over the course of its orbit. But if it's an O or B type star, it's not going to have enough time to do that. It will be seen only in the spiral arms because it will be born, it will uh, live for just a few million years, and then blow itself up. I have some images of other galaxies to show you. This is the Sombrero Galaxy, and what we're seeing is a lot of 
uh, bright emission from stars, and then we also see a dusty lane or a ring in a disk around the uh, large bulge of this galaxy. There's other galaxies that don't have a disk appearance, and these are called elliptical galaxies. They can be very round in shape, or they can be kind of football or egg shaped. And the elliptical galaxies have an other peculiar feature about them. Or rather, they're missing a feature that the disk galaxies have. What we don't see in elliptical galaxies is a lot of blue stars, and we also don't see a lot of gas and dust. And what that means is, is that the elliptical galaxies probably have a lot of old red stars in them. Does this mean that there were never any blue stars in an elliptical galaxy? Well, no, but it could be that the blue stars were there in the past, but they're just not there anymore. And where did all the dust and, the ga dust and gas go? We're not exactly sure. But what we do know is that elliptical galaxies probably don't have a lot of star formation because star formation needs dust and gas in order for that to occur. In the early 20th century, the American astronomer Edwin Hubble came up with a classification system for uh, galaxies. And today, the astronomers call it the tuning fork diagram. It looks like this. And Hubble's classification scheme went from the rounder ellipticals being called E0, and as you go up to a higher E number, you have a more squashed appearance for ellipticals. Then lenticular, or uh, galaxies that have kind of a, a weak division between elliptical and spiral, would be maybe an S0. For spiral galaxies that don't have a bar through the center, Hubble classified them as SA, SB, and SC. Um, SA had uh, perhaps fewer spiral arms that were less uh, tightly wound. And uh, as you go to a barred spiral galaxies, you'd have SBA, SBB, and SBC, where you'd have uh, uh, less tightly wound spirals as you go to B and C classifications. Now Hubble actually thought that this was an evolutionary sequence for galaxies, that they evolved from ellipticals into spirals. Today astronomers don't really think that. In fact, galaxy evolution is a very complex process that astronomers may, uh, don't have a complete picture of. In fact, astronomers think that some galaxy evolution and the different shapes that we see may be the result of collisions between galaxies, not just an individual galaxy evolving into a different shape. And so the idea that Hubble's tuning fork classification scheme is an evolutionary sequence for galaxies is kind of an outdated idea. Oh, by the way, there's another classification for galaxies Though, and these are ones that don't have a disk, sh disk shape or an elliptical shape. And, in, and an example of this would be the Large Magellanic Cloud, which orbits the Milky Way galaxy. And uh, here's an image of it. We call these irregular galaxies.